So as many of you know, several women came forward last year with allegations against Joe Biden. And these allegations uh, claim that he touched them inappropriately. Now, the things that these women, individuals like Lucy Flores, alleged were that he, you know, without their consent, smelled their hair, kissed their heads, you know, things of that nature. Um, and he apologized, and then the media, after defending him, moved on. However, now we are learning about an allegation from a woman named Tara Reid that is very serious. This is the most serious allegation that has been alleged about Joe Biden, and she reportedly tried to come forward at the time when other women were coming forward, although she was discouraged after being attacked and defamed, and she reached out to an organization called Time's Up, which is supposed to help Me Too victims, and she was denied because uh, they claim that since they are a nonprofit, they can't help her against someone who's running for federal office, which is really a dubious claim to make, legally speaking. But the story goes a little bit deeper, and Ryan Grimm released an article in The Intercept that explains that there's a conflict of interest that prevented them from helping her out. But before we get to that, I actually want to go over her claims, because these haven't been independently uh, vetted yet. Ryan Grimm didn't really talk about these claims in his article. He talks more so about the aspects of Time's Up not wanting to assist her, but she did appear on Katie Halper's podcast, and she described what Joe Biden allegedly did to her, and this is very serious. Now, I can't provide you with the evidence. I can't independently verify the claims that she's making myself. So all we have right now are her sto her words, her story, and we have not heard at the time I'm recording this from Joe Biden or his team yet. But I do think that she deserves to be heard. And I think that this is uh, important. It goes beyond politics. This is about making sure that people in power, men in power specifically, can't use their positions of power to get their subordinates to do things that are inappropriate, that they don't feel comfortable doing. So I'm going to play a little clip. This is about two minutes long from her interview with Katie Halper. You can find this full video here on Katie's Twitter, but she hasn't released the full interview as of yet. When that does come out, I'll link to it down below. But here's a quick overview of what she claims Biden did to her back in the 90s when she worked for him. He just said, hey, come here, Tara. And then I, I handed him the thing and he greeted me. He remembered my name. And then it we were alone and it was the strangest thing. There was no like exchange really. He just had me up against the wall and um, I was wearing like a skirt and, you know, business skirt, but I wasn't wearing stockings. It was kind of a hot day that day. And I was wearing heels. And I remember my legs had been hurting from the marble, you know, of the Capitol, mm -hmm. like walk. And I, so I remember that kind of stuff. I remember like I was wearing a blouse and he just had me up against the wall and the wall was cold. And I remember he, it happened all at once. The gym bag, I don't know where it went. I handed it to him, it was gone. And then his hands were on me and underneath my clothes. And um, yeah, and then he went, oh, he went down my skirt, but then up inside it. And he uh, penetrated me with his fingers, whatever. And um, I, uh, he was kissing me at the same time and he was saying something to me. He said several things and I can't remember everything he said. I remember a couple of things. I remember him saying first, before, like as he was doing it, do you wanna go somewhere else? And then him saying to me when I pulled away, he um, got finished doing what he was doing and I kind of was pulled back and he said, he said, come on, man, I heard you liked me. Mm -hmm. and it's that phrase stayed with me because I kept thinking what I might've said. And I can't remember exactly if he said I thought or if I heard, but it's, it's like he implied like that I had done this, like, I don't know. And for me, it was like every, everything shattered in that moment because I knew like we were alone. It was over, right? He wasn't trying to do anything more, but it's, I looked up to him. He was like my father's age. He was this champion of, women's rights in my eyes and I couldn't believe it was happening. It didn't see, it seems surreal. 
So as you heard from the details of this, these are very serious allegations. You know, the inappropriate touching was one thing, but what she is describing here is full-on sexual assault. So what I think needs to happen is the FBI needs to investigate this. If Joe Biden, you know, wanted to be responsible, he would call for an FBI investigation. But um, yeah, this is uh, this is very disturbing. Now, she went on to talk about how he pointed at her, he put his finger in her face or something like that, and said, you're nothing to me, because he was offended that she rejected his advance. It's it's really, really troubling. Now, I do want to get to uh, Ryan Grimm's piece here. This isn't the full story, but I'll link to that also down below. What he describes here is also really disturbing because it shows that, you know, conflicts of interests exist in politics. And even though organizations do good, at the end of the day, you know, politics is politics and people in power are going to have a lot of their little uh, minions look out for them. So Ryan Grimm writes, Last April, Tara Reid watched as a familiar conversation around her former boss, Joe Biden, and his relationship with personal space unfolded on the national stage. Nevada politician Lucy Flores alleged that Biden had inappropriately sniffed her hair and kissed the back of her head as she waited to go on stage at a rally in 2014. Biden, in a statement in response, said that not once in his career did he believe that he had acted inappropriately, but Flores's allegations sounded accurate to Reid. She said because Reed had experienced something very similar as a staffer in Biden's Senate office years earlier. After she saw an episode of the ABC show The View in which most of the panelists stood up for Biden and attacked Flores as politically motivated, Reed decided that she had no choice but to come forward and support Flores. She gave an interview to a local reporter describing several instances in which Biden had behaved similarly toward her, inappropriately touching her during her early 90s tenure in his Senate office. In that first interview, she decided to tell a piece of the story she said that matched what had happened to Flores, plus she had filed a contemporaneous complaint and there were witnesses, so she considered the allegation bulletproof. The short article brought a wave of attention on her, along with accusations that she was doing the bidding of Russian President Vladimir Putin, so Reid went quiet. As the campaign went on, Reid, who first supported Senator Elizabeth Warren and then Senator Bernie Sanders, began to reconsider staying silent. She thought about the world she wanted her daughter to live in and decided that she wanted to continue telling her story and push back against what she saw as online defamation. To get legal help and manage what she knew from her first go-round would be serious backlash, she reached out to the organization Time's Up, established in the wake of the Me Too movement, to help survivors tell their stories. By February, she learned from a new conversation with Time's Up, which also involved director Sharon Tajani, that no assistance could be provided because the person she was accusing, Biden, was a candidate for federal office and assisting a case against him could jeopardize the organization's nonprofit status. The public relations firm that works on behalf of the Time's Up Legal Defense Fund is SKD Knickerbocker, whose managing director, Anita Dunn, is the top advisor to Biden's presidential campaign. A spokesperson for Biden declined to comment. The SKD case spokesperson assigned to Time's Up referred questions back to the National Women's Law Center. So, you know, it, it's it's absurd to think that they would lose their nonprofit status because, first of all, the whole point of the Me Too movement is to communicate to people in positions of power that they are not protected from these types of allegations. Harvey Weinstein, you know, politicians. So if you're saying that your goal is to protect women, but you can't touch anyone who's a politician who's running for office, what's the point? Now, of course, this is nonsensical. Lawyers who Ryan Grimm consulted with said, no, that what they're saying is a stretch. It doesn't really make sense. What I think makes sense is that Anita Dunn she is working with Biden's campaign, and um, they didn't want to pursue this because they knew that it could potentially hurt him politically. And Tara, as far as I know, is a credible person. Her allegation is very serious, and I understand her reasoning as to why she didn't want to come out. First of all, she initially supported Elizabeth Warren and then moved on to Bernie Sanders. So by supporting Biden's opponents, his biggest opponents, she didn't want this to seem politically motivated. On top of this, she didn't want to single-handedly 
hurt Joe Biden's chances because she doesn't want Donald Trump to get reelected. And on top of that, Democrats attacked her by calling her a Russian asset. How despicable is that? They're not being responsible and calling for an investigation. They're not calling for these claims to be vetted. They smeared and defamed her. That's what they chose to do. This is just despicable. Now, after we just saw Christine Blasey Ford come out against Brett Kavanaugh, everyone who was in the Democratic Party said that, you know, Brett Kavanaugh, if he were truly innocent, would call for an investigation, would actually vet these claims. And they were critical of Republicans, rightfully so. But now, all of a sudden, crickets, silence. The media is ignoring this story so far. Me Too activists like Alyssa Milano defended Joe Biden last year and are saying nothing now, at the time I record this video, about Tara Reid's claims. These are very serious claims. This is exactly what the Me Too movement was created for, to let women know that they can actually share their story, right? If they had someone who was in a powerful position come on to them, touch them inappropriately, sexually assault them, they could share their story, and this movement had their backs. But what Democrats are doing is choosing to put politics over morality. And that's genuinely disgusting. Like, this story, beyond, like, the actual details, makes me lose a lot of faith in humanity, because I already knew that Democrats didn't actually care about the causes that they, you know, try to promote, women's rights, marginalized communities. I know that they use these types of communities as props to help themselves get elected. It seemed, you know, legitimate to the left, but just how brazen they are at just not caring at all about a very serious allegation because they don't want to hurt Joe Biden's chances. I mean, who cares about politics in this instance? Who cares about politics? And, you know, I know that as a Bernie Sanders supporter, that sounds, you know, rich coming from me of all people. But in the event, a politician that I supported was um, accused of something like this, I would expect from them what I expect from anyone else. Call on the FBI to investigate and vet these claims. You would want it to be looked into further if you truly are innocent. Now, we don't know about these details. We don't necessarily know at this point in time what Joe Biden's team is saying. So far, they haven't responded to Ryan Grimm's article, and they're kind of just trying to sleep on this story in hopes that it will die and that, you know, everyone will ignore it since we're all focused on COVID-19. But I think that Tara has a right to be heard. As far as we know, she seems perfectly credible. She tried to come out at a time when other women who felt, you know, that they were um, violated by Joe Biden if he touched them, kissed them, um, were coming out, and that's reasonable, but she didn't want to deal with the backlash. If you are a normal citizen and you suddenly get a wave of attention and it's disproportionately negative, that's really, really scary. That's really scary. Like, I know firsthand, not because of this, but like when I first was doing YouTube videos and one of the first videos I posted um, went semi-viral because it appeared on the front page of Reddit, I actually put that video on private so people couldn't see it because the comments that were said about me really, like, they uh, kind of crushed my soul. So, you know, getting attention just in general is really scary. But if you're getting that kind of attention, if people are calling you a Russian asset, that's really scary, especially if you're coming out and you're saying something that is really serious like this. So I totally understand her reasoning. I think it's it's sound. Like I would I wouldn't know what to do. And this is why a lot of women don't share their stories because it's incredibly scary and they have no confidence that anything will be done. But I mean the Me Too movement, the Times Up Fund was created specifically for this purpose. So women live in an environment where they feel comfortable sharing their stories. And now that it's someone that, you know, they like, they're like, "Nope, sorry." We're going to leave you hanging. We'll refer you to the Women's Law Center, but we're not going to help you. So um, we, again, have to acknowledge that these are allegations at this point. They have not been confirmed. These uh, claims have not, as far as I know, been vetted. 
but we need the authorities to get involved. We need the FBI to investigate this. She has witnesses, people she talked to at the time uh, and shared her story with, you know, her brother, friends. She shared the story with her mother who has since passed away. Ryan Grimm talks about this in an interview with Crystal Ball on the Hill, but this is incredibly serious. And, you know, people need to know about this. Putting aside the political ramifications, we have to be consistent because we can't just pick and choose when to take these claims seriously if it's politically expedient. We have to be consistent and vet all of these claims and make sure that we hear these types of stories out, right? And let the people decide if they choose to believe it or not. But this is serious and action needs to be taken. Attention needs to be paid to this story. So you have the details. Um, you'll just have to decide, but we'll wait to see if the media actually covers this and actually does a more comprehensive investigation.